Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the series that we've been discussing in class and the series techniques. So let me just do a quick recap. So if you have a, um, a series, yeah, let's just we'll start it at um, zero and go to infinity. So this is a one, or sorry, a zero plus a one plus a two and so on. Then the question um, that will always be asked, so um, typical question, would be, um, does this series converge or diverge? Okay. And then I might uh, ask a follow-up question, which um, says, um, if it converges, uh, what is the sum? Okay, so let me just <clears throat> begin with the following. So in this case, the only time that I'll ever ask this is um, uh, only we'll ask this if um, the series is geometric. And the reason for that is that we, we only know how to compute the sum of a series when the series is geometric. So for example, so a r to the n, n goes from zero to infinity. So this looks like a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus so on. Okay, so this is, this diverges if uh, the absolute value of r is bigger than or equal to one and it converges to a over one minus r if the absolute value of r is less than one. Okay, so this is the only situation in which we know how to, to answer the follow-up question. Okay, so typically I'm just going to ask you whether a series converges or diverges. And so we have to ask ourselves when we look at the series, is it geometric? Well, that's how, that's the way that we would, <coughs> we have a technique for de determining whether it converges if it's geometric, and this is the technique here. Otherwise, we might, um, we might start with uh, the test for divergence. Okay. So what this means, this means check the limit of the terms. So we check the limit just of the terms, well, a0, a1, a2, see what this limit is. We check this limit um, and if it is not zero, okay, then the series diverges. Diverges. So for example, this series right here, 2n over n plus 1, okay, this diverges because 2n over n plus 1 goes to 2 as n goes to infinity. Okay, so that's the test for divergence. So the first, so typical question, does it converge or diverge? What you should first do is check if it's geometric. That tells you whether or not it converges or diverges, and you're able to compute the sum in that case. Or you can then check um, the test for divergence, and um, if the terms of the series don't go to zero, then you know that the series has to diverge. So that's some stuff that we've seen already. Um, we also know that, so um, we know that series of the following type, so one over n to the p, and goes from zero to infinity, this converges, so here p is a, is a positive number in this case. So this converges if p is bigger than 1 and diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. And this is by the integral test, which 
is a super bonus um, category on the next exam. I mean, the integral test itself is a super bonus category. This is something that I just expect you to know, so this is like a fact. Just use this um, from now on. But the reason is by the integral test. So, um, so that's, I guess that would be, um, that would be strategy number two. Does the series look like this? Okay. So going into um, this a little bit further, we have the limit comparison test. test. Okay. So there's um, there's two ways to answer. So let's let's look at a very simple example. So how about uh, n cubed plus two n over uh, three n to the fifth plus four. Start at one, go to infinity. So the limit comparison test. So there are two ways to answer this question. So there's um, there's there's the uh, let's call it the um, the intuition answer. So the question is, I guess, uh, converge or diverge. This is our question. Okay. So the the intuition answer is that we'll take a look at the terms. When n is very large, so as n goes to infinity, n cubed plus 2n over 3n to the fifth plus 4 looks a lot. <clears throat> this is a symbol that means um, asymptotic, but, but let's just think of it as looks a lot like n cubed over 3n to the fifth. Okay. The reason for that is because when n is very big, n cubed will be much, much bigger than 2 times n, and 3 times n to the fifth will be much bigger than 4. And so the 2n and the 4 become insignificant when n is very large. All that matters are these, um, these leading terms, even if the powers aren't the same. Okay. So this, if we simplify this, there's 3 copies of n here and 5 here. So this simplifies to three, 1 over 3n squared. And, um, and we know that the series 1 over 3n squared, which is equal to 1 third times the series 1 over n squared, converges. Okay, So we say by comparison, we expect the original series to converge. So the original series to also converge. Okay, so this is the, I wanna make this very clear, this is the intuition answer, okay? Um, this is what should go on in your head uh, for a question like this, if I, if I show you this series and ask you if it converges or diverges, your intuition answer is that, well, this series here will behave a lot like this series as the value of n gets larger and larger and larger. And since this series converges, we, we, we conclude that this series probably converges. Okay. So let me show you the actual way that the computation is done. Okay. So this is the, that is, that is one partial credit answer for this, but the actual limits, uh, limit comparison computation goes as follows. Okay, so the limit, uh, the limit comparison test says if you have two series, AN and BN, and these are positive, so we want the terms to all be positive, so if these are positive, and if the limit, as n goes to infinity, of the ratio an over bn, and it really doesn't matter. You could do the limit of the ratio of bn over an. So the order of this fraction with respect to these does not matter. Um, so, oops, sorry, not one. Uh, infinity. So if this is positive number, and if it's finite, then an and bn, the series, both converge or both diverge. OK, 
Okay, so this, this says that if you have two series and you take a look at the ratio of the terms and you look at the limit of that ratio as n gets, goes to infinity, as long as that limit is positive and finite, then these two series will do the same thing. So if this one converges, then this one will converge. And if this one diverges, then this one will diverge. So in practice, back to our example, What was the example again? I already can't remember. So it is n cubed plus 2n over 3n to the fifth plus 4. Okay. Converge or diverge is the question. So um, we use our intuition. series 1 over 3n squared, okay, which we know converges, and we apply the, um, the limit comparison test. So we want to check the limit as n goes to infinity of, all right, here's the, here's the, the, the pressure. 9 or n cubed plus 2n over 3n to the fifth plus 4. That's in the top. And then in the bottom, 3, 1 over 3n squared. So we want to check this limit um, right now. So let's, um, let's simplify this just a tiny bit. It's the limit of, so this is a fraction in the denominator. So we just flip the fraction. And here we have n cubed plus 2n divided by 3n to the fifth plus 4. Okay, so let's, um, so let's simplify this on the next page. So we're, we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n squared times n cubed plus 2 times n divided by 3n to the fifth plus 4. If we distribute that through, then we get the limit as n goes to infinity. So 3n squared times n cubed is 3n to the fifth. And then 3n squared times 2n would give us 6n cubed. And then we have 3n to the fifth plus 4. Now, if we're trying to check what this limit is, we take a look, we pull out the highest common factor of n. So the highest common factor in both of these is n to the fifth. So we pull n to the fifth out of both the top and the bottom. And what we're left with is three. And then we have plus six over n, or six n cubed over n to the fifth. And in the bottom we have three plus four over n to the fifth. Okay, those cancel each other. And we're looking at the limit of the following expression. So three plus on the top. So I've got three copies of n here and five here. So that leaves us six over n squared. And then here I've got three plus four over n to the fifth power. Okay, as n goes to infinity, these two fractions right here will go to zero. So this limit is just three over three. So it's three plus zero over three plus zero, which is one, okay? One is positive and finite. So we say since this limit is uh, positive and finite, the series n cubed plus 2n over 3n to the fifth plus 4 converges. And this is because 1 over 3n squared converges. Uh, and this is by the limit comparison test. So this is the way that you actually use the limit comparison test to uh, determine whether or not a series of this form converges, okay? So now, <clears throat> let me just, um, this is about as tricky as the algebra will ever get in a limit comparison test. Um, 
if I actually ask you to perform the computation. However, um, I might ask for your intuition. So what is your intuition? about the convergence or divergence of this a series of the following type. So we might do something like uh, 4, uh, the square root of n plus, uh, plus well, let's do just plus 1. And then down here, let's do something like uh, 3n cubed plus 2n. Okay. So take a look. So what is the leading power? So when n is big, not just big, but when n is huge, 4 over root n plus 1 divided by 3n cubed plus 2n behaves a lot like, well, the highest power of n in the top is n to the 1 half, and the highest power in the bottom is n cubed. So we get something like this. And if you simplify this, you get 4 over 3n to the 2.5 power. There's 3 minus a half. We'll give you that. And this series, 4 over 3 times 1 uh, times the series um, n to the, 1 over n to the 2.5 converges. So we guess convergence. So this is, this is not an example where we uh, used the full um, computation involved in the limit comparison test. All we did was ask for the intuition here. Okay? And so I would say that this is probably more important for you to understand than the actual computation. Although if you can understand the computation in the most basic case, like what we did just before this, um, you are in pretty good shape. Okay? So that's the limit comparison test. The other test that we have is the alternating series test. Okay, so this says that if you have a an alternating series, so let's start at one, go to infinity. So this looks like uh, a one minus a two plus a three minus a4 plus a5, and so on. This says that um, <coughs> this says that if we have an alternating series test, so here the ans are, are all positive in this case, so that this is actually an alternating sum. And if the limit as n goes to infinity of the ans is 0, and if the ans is a decreasing sequence, then the series converges. Converges, okay. Moreover, more importantly, moreover, if S is the sum, then the partial sum, K, let's start at 1, uh, let's see, minus 1 to the n plus 1 a n. So this partial sum, sk, this is just a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 plus all the way up to plus uh, whatever, whatever the k term is. Okay, so this is stop at k, right? So if s is the sum, then this partial sum is within... a k plus 1 of, <clears throat> excuse me, of the, of, of the sum. Okay, so this is a, this is the error estimate that we get. We know how far off we are just by looking at the, the next term. So if you decide, well, I just want to estimate it, I just want to add up the first k of them, how far away am I from the actual sum? You're that far away. Okay, so this is the statement of the alternating series test. So let's just look at a quick example. So how about um, 
n goes from uh, 1 to infinity minus 1 uh, to the n plus 1 divided by the square root of n. So this looks like 1 minus 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 3 minus 1 over root 4 plus and so on. Okay, so this converges. Um, the limit of, so here in, our, in this case the ans are 1 over the square root of n. Uh, the limit of these ans equals 0. They are going to 0. Moreover, because, so 1 over the square root of x, this function here, if you take its derivative, you get minus a half times x to the minus 3 halves. Okay? So that looks like minus 1 over 2 um, x to the 3 halves power. This is always negative if x is bigger than 0. So this, the sequence, the terms, are de is a decreasing sequence. Okay. Uh, therefore, the alternating series test says converge. Okay. So this is an example. Now, how far off are we? Let's see. So if um, let's go up to a let's try s uh, <clears throat> let's do s sixty three. So we'll start at sixty three. Just randomly picking a number. Um, so we get minus one to the n plus one, one over the square root of n. So this looks like uh, one minus 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 3 minus 1 over root 4 plus all the way up to, let's see, 63. So that would be plus 1 over the square root of 63. How far off is this? This number here is less than 1 over the square root of 64, which is 1 eighth, which is what is that, 0.125, um, is less than 125 away from the sum. Okay, very good. So this is how we apply the alternating series test. So um, use this to study for the, um, on, on the problems that we've done, and we'll add more videos as we add more tests and more material. Great.